One day you'll be cooking with dry chickpeas, but today is not that day. Falafel is traditionally made with soaked dried chickpeas and then fried, but their canned counterpart are just so darn convenient. So today we're gonna learn how to make falafel with no soaking, just can opening. Hey, I'm Nick Zem from Walk to Eat, where we help you simplify healthy living so that you can be the best version of yourself. If you're just interested in learning more about healthy cooking and eating in the simplest way possible, then consider subscribing. Dried chickpeas, eight hours of soaking, a pot of hot cooking oil, are just a few things that you are not gonna need today. Instead, you'll be relying on the ever popular and convenient can of chickpeas to make these super healthy and easy chickpea falafel fritters in your oven. These crispy patties are even a good meat substitute if you are looking for one. Serve them with a side of yogurt to do your dunking in and you are in prime time finger food territory. There's one more not so common ingredient in falafel and that's chickpea flour. You can find this at most grocery stores these days and specialty food markets, but the flour is used to keep everything together. Think of it as a binder that all the other ingredients in these fritters adhere to. If you don't have chickpea flour or don't want to buy some, then you can also use whole wheat or white or oat or almond or any other gluten-free flour. Chickpea flour is a bit more dense than other flours, so if you do substitute, then add a little extra. In this case, add about a tablespoon extra of another flour. So let's get started. Canned chickpeas are the main ingredient, so buy quality ones. Look for cans with a low amount of salt, like this one, which is 4% of the recommended sodium intake, and that don't have a BPA lining. Buying organic usually covers your bases, and they're typically only 20 to 40 cents more per can. Drain and rinse two cans of chickpeas under running water, then dry off the best you can. Do this by pouring onto a kitchen towel, move them all around, then wrap them up in the towel. This makes it easy to transfer these otherwise unwieldy little balls. Pour the chickpeas into a large bowl. Use a fork, potato masher, muddler, or whatever else you have on hand to break up most of the chickpeas. The more you can break them up, the better the patties will stick together. But you don't need to get every single little sphere. You can also toss them into a food processor. That looks about good. Peel and finely chop half of a medium onion or quarter onion if large. Make three cuts parallel to your work surface almost all the way through the onion, then rotate 90 degrees to make small slices through the height of your onion, almost all the way through the length. Rotate 90 degrees back and make cuts all the way through your onion to get finely chopped pieces. Make a few more passes so your onion pieces are nice and small and uniform. Add the chopped onion to your bowl with your mashed chickpeas. In fact, you're gonna add all your other ingredients to this mixture. Peel and grate three garlic cloves into the bowl. Make sure you get all the flavor in there. Next, add five tablespoons of chickpea flour. If you're using another flour like almond, whole wheat, oat, or white, add six tablespoons. Then add a spice mixture of cumin, paprika, kosher salt, and cayenne if you want some spice. You can use just about any mixture of spices here, but this is a good starting point. Next is a quarter cup of whole milk or Greek yogurt. This will add liquid to help all the ingredients bind and keep the patties tasting moist. Now take a minute or two to mix it all up. At first, it may feel very loose, but once the flour gets hydrated from the yogurt, you'll notice it'll feel much more dense, sticky, and harder to mix. This consistency looks patty forming ready. Add two to three tablespoons of olive oil to a nine by 13 baking sheet to prevent sticking. You may be thinking my baking sheet looks gross and dirty, but to me, it just looks well seasoned. I use this one when I really want extra crispiness. Scoop about a quarter cup of the mixture and form into a patty with your hands about one inch thick. Lay on the baking sheet. This recipe makes about 12 patties, so place in rows of three along the width of the sheet. Space them out evenly after you place the last patty. Now all they need is some heat and time to make them nice and crispy. You can see that there are still some chunks of chickpea, which is totally okay. Place in the oven at 425 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes total. Let's take a look at Garner sleeping while we wait because it's cute. After 15 minutes, remove the pan from the oven. Use a spatula to flip all the patties and you'll be greeted by a beautiful bottom side of crispiness when you flip. Place back in the oven for 15 or 20 minutes until the other side is as crispy as the first. Just like this. You want browning all around and even some darker spots. 
If these don't remind you of meatless chicken nuggets, then I don't know what will. They're dense and crispy while the yogurt keeps them moist on the inside. To serve, transfer the batch to a plate and set it alongside a small bowl of yogurt for dipping because it's time for dunking. These falafel fritters are just super fun. There's really a, only a few things that can satisfy meat craving when I have one, but this is one of them. They get nice and crispy. They're dense with the chickpeas and the chickpea flour. They're fairly high in protein, so they're really checking a lot of boxes here. And not to mention, it can really give you some chicken nugget nostalgia. Remember, if you want to learn more about cooking and eating healthy in the simplest way possible, then consider subscribing. And I'll see you soon.